Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. Let's build. It's been a while since I've even looked at this footage because, well, for one thing, uh, we're continuing with the uh, Octuple Gun Fun Canoe. And this is going to be an interesting post commentary because uh, what you are seeing right now is the essentially the behind the scenes of a craft that's now finished. It has now appeared in uh, on live stream and in a video uh, of its very own. Where spoiler alert, uh, one of my other ships um, might have completely demolished it, but that's okay because fun was had and it was a learning experience. So, that's, uh, today what we're seeing here is building the hull, and uh, this footage you're seeing now was actually recorded uh, quite some time ago, so basically if you go back and look at uh, when uh, the live stream, when this thing first appeared, uh, was streamed, I think that was one, two, two weeks ago actually is when this was recorded, so I've, even more so than usual, completely forgotten uh, what has been happening. Uh, I know that a hull was made. I forget what specific escapades happened uh, during the process and that sound you're hearing is me taking off uh, me coat because I've been talking for a le for just over a minute and already I'm feeling too hot. Because as we all know talking is extreme physical activity. It is in fact an extreme sport. I mean I guess it, I guess it could be depending on what exactly you're saying into who but yeah. So, another news, speaking of, um, I was about to say speaking of extreme sports, but it's not actually relevant at all. I've gotten the first, uh, vaccination jab for the you-know-what, the first of two. And it was very exciting and interesting. And it's, like, the people there who stabbed me, uh, oh so gently, um, told me that it's basically not really, uh, well, at the very least, needle-wise, it's no different than a regular flu injection. Um, it is still... I don't know, I do not remember very well all the other times I've gotten jabbed, but... Um, like, uh, it's weird. Like, in the moment, it didn't even hurt. It was a really sharp needle. But now, my arm really hurts, because I got jabbed in my left arm. And uh, now the muscle there is aching like crazy, as presumably uh, the muscle tissue there is like it's all hands on deck as the immune system figures out what on earth was just uh, was just injected into the scene so that's fun and um, doesn't have any relevance to what's happening on screen now but I felt like sharing that get vaccinated people it's very good for you and even more importantly it's good for the people around you so what is happening on screen um, we're building a hull and so this is the usual kind of greedy armor design uh, and the armor design that uh, uh, works best if you're using cheaper, uh, weaker material, which is just block spam. Lots of it. I was repeatedly worried during this whole build that this thing would end up, like, too big. Um, and there is a, a kind of a strict size limit to, uh, to all my craft, really, because it's what my CPU can handle. And I've got a pretty decent CPU, but uh, the problem isn't just uh, the individual... Blah, the individual craft being too big, it's when they've got to play nice with a whole swarm of other things as well. And in fact, um, I really wanted to stick uh, missiles on this thing. I didn't actually end up doing that, but uh, I'd, at the very least, I like the hull that resulted from all this. I think it was very pretty. And um, incidentally, like uh, that kind of gap there is uh, something... Uh, that is known in the nautical business as a wet space and is uh, something that I was told about ages ago by people who know these things and I actually love doing that firstly because it saves block count and secondly because um, it really helps with buoyancy particularly if you do what I tend to do anyway which is have um, what's, well it's not just I'm not the only one to do this it's kind of standard practice for building anything that floats is that the lighter stuff is on top and the denser, heavier stuff that sinks is on the bottom, and yeah. Oh, and this is the this is the part that I am. Uh, uh, what what is uh, what are you doing, eh? What are you, what is you doing? Aha! That's what I was doing. I wanted an extra air gap uh, right there, which I wasn't getting, 
And like, oh yeah, this is this is classic me building stuff. Is uh, changing your mind. I say that like I'm pretty sure like a lot of people do this, particularly when they're feeling a design out. They just uh, they build, they put something down, and then they and then they think. That is when the brain engages, and they're like, oh, wait a moment, wait a moment. I didn't actually want to do that. So here I am, just making it a teeny, teeny bit wider because I want that air gap, that extra air gap right at the base of where this uh, hull is going to flare out. So, yeah, like you already saw me uh, about to do it, but like uh, one of the problems with building a uh, craft like this, like this kind of canoe thing, is that um, if you do it the way I tend to do it, and I don't necessarily recommend that, I know perfectly well that my ship designs are not 100% optimal in terms of shape. Um, the actual shape you want is basically um, is basically a rectangle with the front being uh, pointy. That's basically it. This kind of uh, elongated canoe shape that I do, uh, it's not super space efficient. You can't jam as much big stuff inside it as you otherwise could. But um, just building it makes me happy for some reason. I don't know why. I just like seeing sleek craft, even the if uh, they don't perform as well. It's a stylistic thing. And um, I do want to get in the habit of building round ships, though, because round ships are fun. I've built a round ship before, and um, I'm half tempted just, like, um, at some point, maybe this year, is just go as long as possible just building uh, as, like, as many not-canoe things as possible. Man, that's another thing to add to the list. I have a long backlog of videos that... I could do and should do and probably should do. Way to repeat yourself there, brain. But, uh, but yeah, like, there's so many fun ship shapes. Yeah, I just keep coming back to canoes because it's like the equivalent of comfort food. Which I guess for me... What the hell's my comfort food? I guess my comfort food would just be, you know... You know, comfort food, comfort food. Probably just, you know... Probably a steak and cheese pie or something like that. That is a guilty pleasure of mine because it's not healthy, and uh, it's not healthy. <laughs> That's basically it. But what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the shape of this thing. So, if you do what I tend to do and just use a lot of uh, diagonal slopes uh, to make the thing sleek and stuff, um, that tends to make big things like this and especially tall things really wide. So this kind of slope staggering on the side here is something. I'm particularly pleased with because I think it's really cool and once again you can see right now that I did a thing changed my mind and thought you know what vertical beams because why not this is a not deliberate cross hatching this is just me thinking I always forget like I've made multiple armor tutorials but I always forget uh, why exactly uh, people kept telling me that uh, vertical beams are you know just slightly better than horizontal I honestly never remember why, but I do remember that it was very convincing at the time and it actually stood up under testing, which is weird, but, you know, that's how it is. And there we've got a lovely cross-section. I love building uh, ships in cross-section first, because, well, it just, it just makes sense if you're wanting to do an armor scheme. And then, uh, our Lord and Savior Nick Smart's gift to the universe, prefabbing, and in particular mirrored prefabbing. How did we get along with anything before we did, uh, before mirrored prefabbing was a thing? Because really now, like, it is the absolute best. It saves so much time, makes building so much less tedious. That's an interesting thing. If you've ever wondered why, um, you know, like, how do, how do you explain this? Uh, what exactly defines uh, my building style in From the Depths? It's certainly not things being 100% optimized because I, I am a very patient person but I do not have patience for things that I don't find fun. And uh, just tweaking every single number uh, on a craft is not fun for me so I tend to avoid it. And uh, But what I do find fun is finding quick, simple and efficient ways to build which is why you know, I've, you know, I make canoes out of habits, like, that's the hull I know how to build quickly. Because it's very simple, it's just, you make the middle, you make one end, you prefab uh, the end you've just made, and then you just, you know, paste it on the rear, and there you go. 
And that's not even the fastest kind of hull to build. Like, the fastest hull to build is actually the most volume efficient one, like I talked about. It's basically just, you know, an oblong and make the front pointy. That's it. And, like, it's way simpler to build. And I could start getting in the habit of building that. In fact, I'm gonna do that. After I'm done recording this, and I'm done editing and rendering and all that stuff, I might just uh, make really basic ship hulls. Like, really basic. Like, actually more basic than what I usually do. Because um, they actually hold up really well. Those of you who have watched my stuff before, I think I've done a... I, yeah, it was actually done in a Let's Build. It's the Xerxes. It's a... Uh, it's a kind of modern style uh, missile cruiser, and it's actually pretty good. Well, it's shown, it's getting long in the tooth now, and it's certainly not the best design I've ever made. That would probably uh, be the Stolslung, or the Quetzer, because uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, this, like, well, the Stolslung is a, a giant ass battleship with a somewhat suggestive name, uh, which means Steel Snake, that I've shown on the channel a lot. And the Quetzer is my go-to uh, high-altitude spy plane, and I love that thing because it has no combat capability, it just flies really fast, and uh, in campaigns it just, you know, it covers, it makes a huge area visible and makes intel so much better. But yeah, and it's, I guess it's, it's not, the, again, not the most optimized design, but it does its job, and that's great. So yeah, super thick deck, uh, by the way, here. I, and here's the interesting thing about building, uh, not just this thing, but um, kind of the other reinforced uh, wood build that I did the other day, uh, Gary the Monitor, which I am thrilled uh, to have seen was um, actually on the front page of the Steam Workshop for From the Depths um, for a few days, and that makes me proud. So thank you all of those who uh, went and uh, subscribed to Gary the Monitor and, <laughs> and helped it get, and helped him or they <laughs> to get to the uh, to get to the top of the to get on the front page of the workshop because that's just really fun. It's like I li I I like that people like Gary. Interestingly, what you're seeing here is a bit of spool catcher because I was very nervous at how thin the armor is over there, and so um, yeah, that's basically the armor scheme for the hull, uh, which actually holds up pretty well. Uh, all things considered, like explosion-wise, it holds up pretty well, and the thing floats. This um, that's one of the things I like about making wooden canoes. And let's face it, there's not many advantages to making wooden canoes, uh, but one of the great things about them is that they float really well, and you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, yeah, and so this is comes uh, what is simultaneously my uh, most favorite and least favorite which I guess cancels each other out completely, a part of making any kind of canoe shape, and that's figuring out what the how the hell are to make this thing pointy. So, yeah. I now really want to make a round ship. Round ship, square ship, upside down ship. That'd make a mean airship, actually. Actually, you know what I really, what I started thinking about the other day, uh, with regards to From the Depths and the things I really want to make, I want to make diff guns again, but effective ones, and that's basically impossible now. That's uh, one of the only way back... Oh, this is getting back into the history of things. The controversial advanced cannon overhaul. I remember it like it was yesterday. All oh, the salt in the comments on Discord and on, in the, on Discord and in the comments of people saying how, like, the game was ruined and... Um, Advanced cannons were now terrible, and blah blah blah, and underlying all of it was just the usual story. People didn't like change, and people didn't like their designs being broken, and thought they knew better than the devs on how to make their own freaking game, etc, etc, etc. Now, unlike uh, the, let's face it, the vocal minority of people, um, I was totally cool with the APS update, except... Uh, for one thing in particular, and that was uh, that diff guns got nerfed into oblivion. So diff gun, I don't remember if I've said what that stands for. It's direct uh, input feed. That is when you stick an ammo input directly on the firing piece, and you know, like no need for loaders or an, or clips or anything like that. And the like the shells are fed directly into the firing piece, and then it fires uh, very slowly. But it was just a super. A cheap and easy way 
uh, to make um, to, to just make a battery of guns. It was good, it was good for broadsiders. It was good for lobbing ridiculously <laughs> big shells um, for the for the for the giggles for the lols, as people say. And um, that age, unfortunately, is past us because um, uh, in the great uh, APS uh, update and overhaul. Um, uh, input, ammo inputs put directly on the firing piece have an arbitrary uh, times two penalty to their loading speed. So they already were firing slow and then it's just abysmally slow. Like to the point where even the most practical versions of them, those which, those which were low caliber, were no longer useful at all. And um, their role, so to speak, has been taken over by the, simple, by the um, extra simple weapons uh, that uh, were added since then. Or even before then, I sometimes forget what stuff was added first. Um, but yeah, it, it was still, it was sad. It was sad. Because as, as good as the simple weapons are, there's just something about a direct-fed 500mm gun uh, strapped onto a hull slightly too small for it that just, it still makes me smile to this day. It also would make designing tanks a lot easier. Um, Admittedly, probably not very effective tanks. A uh, tank design is one of many areas in From the Depths, which uh, I could strive to be better at. But here's the thing: um, if the striving isn't fun, you probably shouldn't bother. Because, like, really, at the end of the day, From the Depths is a video game, and you gotta have fun with it. I am reminding myself uh, of this as uh, much as I'm reminding anybody else, because it's very. I guess with video games. Like, particularly video games with a high skill curve. Um, like, it's easy to lose track of why, why you're even doing them in the first place. And the reason is for entertainment. Like, it depends exactly on the kind of game, what kind of entertainment you want to get out of it. No one has fun, genuinely, when playing a horror game, for instance. But they're getting thrilled, which is a form of entertainment. And from the depths, what's the fun in it? It's for me, it's expression of creativity. It's just to uh, spend time on a thing and get it functional and pretty, and like to your standards, whatever those standards may be. And then you can sit back and you can be proud of it, and you can look upon your works and not despair. Although, let's face it, we tend to despair a lot when we look at our own designs, don't we? But yes, yeah, like, but, um, like I was saying, particularly for high, uh, games with a high skill ceiling that require uh, investment of time and effort, and, um, people, I think they sometimes lose track of, like, why they're doing it in the first place, and they just, you know, they're, and it's a very important thing is that their, I guess, self-value, I forget, ah, uh, darn it, I, what is the, what is the word I'm looking for, like, uh, well, yeah, like, their self-value, so to speak, like, what they are, like, ah, jeez. Their self-value is basically based on how good they are at the video game, which is not actually a sensible thing to base, uh, your self- self-worth, that's the word. Sorry, it took me a hot second. I'm watching blocks being placed very slowly. And, um... So yeah, like, uh, when you define your self-worth by, um, how good you are, it's something that was actually made for your entertainment purposes, like, that's, that's a recipe for misery, actually, because it's like, outside of the video game community, absolutely no one is impressed by how good you are, uh, from the depths, or any other kind of hardcore game. Which brings me to a surprising thing. Uh, this is apropos of nothing, uh, by the way. I'm just uh, talking about stuff as it pops into my head, as per usual. Stream of consciousness stuff. Um, I, ages ago, tried playing Dark Souls, specifically Dark Souls 3. And I hated it, and I have a long and oft-rehearsed-in-my-head tirade against the game. Which I re still respected, by the way, because, you know, it's friggin' Dark Souls. It's a genre-defining um, series of games. But I didn't like it uh, when I first played it. And when was that? That was back in... That was actually back in when Dark Souls 3 was first released, which was 2016, I believe. And an amazing thing happened the other day. I decided, uh, because I've been binging a lot of Dark Souls content uh, on the internet, that uh, I should give it another go. And it was actually because I tried 
uh, installing, uh, buying on Steam and installing Dark Souls 1 uh, Remastered, because that's the only one you can get on Steam. And it didn't work because, basically, lo long story short, it, it, there was missing DLL files that I had to reinstall, blah, 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 technical stuff. It's fixed now, so I can probably play it now. But I decided to myself, Borderwise, you should probably uh, download again the Dark Souls game you already own and see if you have fun with that before you, you know, buy another one. Even though uh, the one you were about to buy was the first one, and you should probably start with that before the sequels. Uh, if the Elder Scrolls series has taught me anything, it's never played through game series backwards, but beca because despite uh, what the more toxic fans might whinge about, the later ones actually are usually better because they fix a lot of the problems with the earlier ones. Also, they're more streamlined, they're more polished. Uh, they have bigger budgets, etc, etc. It's not a hard and fast rule, but uh, that tends to be the case. But yeah, so I downloaded, again, uh, Dark Souls 3 and I started playing it, and Something must have happened with me in the past ooh, five years or so. Maybe maybe 3,000 hours uh, playing from the depths and just learning how to learn a game has helped because I'm actually having fun with it. Like, I'm loving it, actually. And, like, the problems I was having it with it before are just less relevant now. Like, honestly having a good time. I'm in two minds whether I'll make any Dark Souls content to put on the channel, because unless people really want it. Uh, because uh, Dark Souls, the way I play Dark Souls is, uh, it's like, jeez, I've got to be, I am incredibly, pa that's my, my one virtue. I am, uh, I mentioned before that I'm uh, patient with stuff, and uh, I'm especially patient with things that I find fun. And I am going through Dark Souls 3 at the pace of a snail. I'm taking absolutely no risks. And uh, there's no cheese in Dark Souls. There's only stuff that works and stuff that doesn't. At least when you're uh, uh, just uh, playing through the game and not bothering with uh, the multiplayer side of it. Which I don't bother with because I don't actually like multiplayer in any game. And especially not in Dark Souls because like it just doesn't... It does not appeal to me at all. So yeah, like, uh, pro probably watching me play Dark Souls is probably one of the most boring things um, you will ever see in your life. And that's me saying this. I upload multi-hour long videos where I just ramble uh, on and on and uh, build wooden canoes. So, there's a uh, jab at myself for you. And, well, let's get back to the hardcore game that's actually being showed on screen right now. Uh, the hull is going well. So, I really liked how this hull ended up uh, turning out yeah, because um, this particular canoe shape, the one that um, uh, gradually flattens out towards either end, I am very fond of it because uh, it's more block efficient than the other kind I do, which is basically um, doesn't uh, taper, um, it doesn't slope up um, at all and so there's usually a lot of wasted space and wasted materials uh, this particular hull design, I feel, is quite good if you just want to build a hull around a massive gun and not use w too many materials. It has its limits and there's probably better hulls for that, like shorter hulls in particular. Uh, you could just, you know, again, the smart way to build, um, well, I say the smart way, it depends on your building style and it depends on what exactly you're trying to do, um, but building all the internals first generally a smarter idea than what I tend to do, uh, which is build the hull before I put things in like the engines or the AI compartment or the ammo compartment or anything like that. So yeah, like not the best move. I kind of do half and half really, like I design the weapons or the turret, because it's usually based around the turret, these kind of tank canoes with a single giant turret on them. And um, so yeah. Like, uh, I build that, then I build the hull around that, and then I just squeeze in what it needs afterward. Honestly, smarter just to squeeze in everything it needs first. And then, uh, you can... And then you build the hull around that, no bigger than it needs to be, and that is probably... Not probably, that is, uh, the most efficient way to do it. But then again, like, um... I'm weird, I guess. So some people consistently get results... Uh, by results, I mean good results, uh, from building every all the internals first. I've seen it happen, uh, to manage it myself. And some people get better results by doing the opposite. Like, they get, um, 
they build the the exterior first and they get good results like that and again that's i've managed that as well i remember man that was that was a good build it feels so good uh in from the depths to build when you have a good idea of what you want uh, out of it because uh, i just remember building uh, the star slung mark ii and um Best way to get good at building a battleship in From the Depths, by the way, and uh, some of you might hate this, it's just build lots of them. And that, well, it's just, it goes that way with every single uh, kind of craft a category in From the Depths. It's just, you build the same thing uh, multiple times, multiple attempts, and you learn just at least one thing every time and see how you go. And so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's how you get better at it. Like, I've uh, known people in the From the Devs community who build, they build one thing, and they build one thing, and one thing only, and they get really good at that, and that's all they care about. Which is fine, because, again, the point is to have fun. The point isn't to enjoy it, and if you want to build nothing but battleships, that's awesome. Keep doing that. If you want to build uh, nothing but jet fighters, that's awesome. Keep doing that. If you want to build... Well, keeping in mind the last uh, weird and wonderful video I did, if you want to build a giant gay battleship with rainbow particle cannons, and that's what you want to build, do that. Like, I don't know. Just like, you gotta, you gotta do what you love. Otherwise, you know, life's too short. And I'm gonna stop there before I start doing that thing I do every um, a Let's Build, which is going on about how life's too short and have fun while you can. So let's talk more about the hull. This kind of... I never know quite how to... I could actually, in retrospect, I could have just shortened this thing considerably. Um, just, you know, keep sloping up until the thing basically uh, tapers off completely. I didn't do that because partially the reason, or well, almost 100% of the reason I make hulls like this is because looking at them makes me go like, yeah, that's pointy and sleek. Pointy and sleek. Is it hydrodynamic? No, actually, because the thing turns like, well, it turns like ass. Like ass, I say. Which is a problem for uh, any uh, kind of design that's very long and narrow, is because, yeah, going forward, very little drag. But as soon as it's, uh, you know, turning, uh, that entire length is pushing against a huge volume of water, and the thing slows uh, right the hell down, which is why this kind of canoe shape, to be perfectly honest with you, is... Better suited for an airship or a hydrofoil skimmer. Like, you can imagine, just you stick hydrofoils on the very bottom of something like this and just put a whole load of, like, jet propulsion on it and then the thing is almost completely out of the water. Also with a very low sonar signature. I gotta make more hydrofoil craft. I gotta, actually, I gotta make more of everything. I gotta make more of everything, especially the things I never usually do. <sighs> So if you're wondering what I'm doing right here, it's kind of uh, it's kind of an azipod uh, platform. Uh, that thing, because I love azipods. Someone, someone help me! Someone call a therapist for me because I'm addicted to azipods. Can't get enough of them. Rudders, pa, pa! I say, rudders, rudders, hydrofoils, turning props. What are you all on about? Azipods are the only way for me. They're all I know. It's only canoes and azipods. Yeah. I need professional help for my azipod canoe addiction. <sighs> Call 0800 azipod addiction now to have your azipod addiction seen to by trained, sympathetic professionals. And this next uh, little uh, moment you're going to see here is me just uh, making sure there is actually reinforced wood backing up all the plain wood pieces uh, that I just placed. And, uh, yeah, that is uh, that is tremendously exciting, and I should uh, probably keep talking right over that. It's always interesting. Also, another problem with having tapering hull designs like this is, like, uh, it's a pain in the butt to get uniform armor thickness. If most of your hull is basically a rectangle shape in top profile, it's easy. You just use the fill tool a lot, and, like, away you go. But in something like this... You've got to, like, for every, I guess, staggered slope, you've got to be like, okay, let's make sure that it's got, it's, uh, 
It's a recommended amount of reinforced wood, and it's like, grr, grr, so it's not actually the best hull type to go with, once again, fully acknowledging it, I make it because it makes me happy, and also because it's something of a meme now that I'm the canoe guy. I'm not sure when that started. I think that started way back in the day when I was first, um, starting my first very cringy Nita playthrough. Please don't watch that. <laughs> watch the watch the Nita playthrough where I actually finished it. <laughs> and of course, saying that, people are going to go back and look at the old cringy Nita playthrough and be like, uh, no, no, past Borderwise is cringe. Past Borderwise is so cringe. Past Borderwise raged at the game because this is before people gently told him Borderwise, you're not you're not fun when you rage. You're not fun when you get salty. You need to be sugary sweet all the time. Well, not all the time, but you get what I mean. It's just I, some people, and I half envy them and half glad I'm not them. Uh, some people are spectacularly uh, entertaining when they get angry at video games. And I guess like the number one example of that for me is, uh, you know, the, like uh, the, the original game grump uh, Aaron Ego Raptor Hansen, I think he's screamingly funny uh, when he rages, like, and presumably, and a lot of the internet would agree with me on that one. And it's fine if you don't, because, you know, everyone's different, and everyone's sense of humor is different, because, um, speaking of the Game Grumps, uh, they find things funny that I think are like, dude, what, really? No, that's, that's just dumb. But that's the thing, it's different strokes for different folks. And, um, that's part of a song, by the way, that I don't know the title of and I don't know the rest of the lyrics. All I know is that it's in a song somewhere that I heard in an advertisement. Advertisement? What is the correct way to pronounce that? I never knew. But anyway, so, um, yeah. How do freaking advertising that sticks in your head? I remember ads from, like, 20 years ago or so. Better than I remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. Like, actually, I do remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. It was eggs. I had eggs, and it was delicious. Thanks for asking. And now I've made myself hungry. Damn it. Damn it. I told myself earlier I couldn't go outside. No, I can't go outside to the grocery store. Because my arm hurts too much. Like, that has any relevance uh, to it at all. Oh, boy. Passport wise, hurry up and finish this hole. Present Borderwise is is hungry, and probably future Borderwise is going to be editing this and saying, "Well, th this is what I got to work with, guys." Like, past me goes on tangents all over the place, all over the place. Ah, boy. Like, speaking of eggs, oh, brace yourself for this tangent. Um. There is an answer to the age-old question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. It's the egg. That's actually a solved thing, because the egg that the first actual chicken came out of was laid by, uh, what was, like, uh, the wild ancestor. Or the, uh, almost domesticated version of the wild ancestor of the domestic chicken, which is the Indian jungle fowl. Look it up, it's a fact. The egg came first, but before the egg was the Indian jungle fowl. So yeah, that's, uh, uh, if I just blew your mind, uh, I'm sorry, but also cool. That tangent did not last as long as I thought it did. It's actually, it is actually kind of fun and interesting to look up the, uh, the wild ancestors of, um, a lot of domestic animals, and now I think about it, like, Sheep in particular, and weird, weird, weird uh, uh, side note to this. I know this uh, because um, because I have a history degree and I actually uh, wrote a thesis on uh, animals in medieval times. And so I can tell you right now that a lot of modern sheep breeds, uh, including things like um, the merino in particular, which is like ridiculously popular sheep breed because of its wool. Um, originated in the Middle Ages, and uh, it was a kind of switch in the High Middle Ages um, uh, from because sheep were actually in the early Middle Ages were raised primarily for their milk, not their wool or their meat. Uh, but it was in the um, 
It was in the high Middle Ages, particularly with Cistercian monks, that people figured out, hang on, wool is actually really useful stuff, and in particular it makes a lot of money if you sell it. So, particularly in places uh, in England, the wool market exploded because people started breeding sheep for wool and to make huge quantities of wool. And um, so, yeah, a lot of modern sheep breeds, uh, bred specifically for wool, uh, originate from the medieval period. And then if you go a lot further back from that to when sheep uh, were first domesticated uh, in the Middle East, it happened first, uh, the wild ancestor of uh, domestic sheep looks absolutely nothing. Well, it's vaguely similar, but it looks like rad as hell, actually. It's called a mufflon. It's like, it's a just, you know closest thing to the wild ancestors of domestic sheep, and the thing looks badass. It's not fluffy, oh no, and it's got horns that you could, you know, hang a dead wolf off of. So yeah, I like a lot of things are like that. Except for cats, really, like... Uh, another fun history fact is that uh, cats were only started to be selectively bred, entirely for appearance, uh, by the way, not function. Cats were already 100% functional uh, for pest control. Uh, they were only rec started to be recently uh, bred uh, for looks and for fashion, which I hate. Never breed an animal just for looks, it's just so cruel. But uh, yeah, so um, for most of human history, cats looked pretty much the same as their wild ancestors, which is the... Well, they were actually, I think they were actually domesticated twice. Uh, in ancient Egypt and... Blast it, when was it? It was one of the islands in the Mediterranean where cats were domesticated independently, according to DNA studies that uh, the scientists do. Uh, but yeah, the cats looked, you know, pretty consistent for most of human history because people weren't breeding them. And, you know, to, like, to do the job as a cat, they're already shaped like a cat. And you look at an African wildcat or something like that, it just looks like a modern tabby cat, except, well, a domesticated tabby cat, it's, except bigger and meaner. So yeah. Also, there's a whole bunch of different wildcat species, um, which have nothing to do with domestic cats, really, but they look like domestic cats. Like breeds of domestic cats. You ever looked at a sand cat? That's a weird critter. It looks like a domestic cat, but um, it's not, and uh, it's not a pet. No touchy. Uh, thing, will, uh, thing will hurt you. Wild animal will hurt you. But yeah, it's like, on that same note, it's like, you look at them. Oh, dogs. I feel so bad for a lot of, for a lot of dog breeds because, uh, uh, oh boy. You look at a pug's face and you think, like, who on earth thought that a dog that can't breathe properly was a good idea? Whoever that was, they deserve a right punch in the nose, so they have funny breathing problems as well. Oh, boy. Remember to adopt, and don't buy. When I say that, my flatmate wants to buy cats. But she's got an excuse, because she's got a very specific life uh, lifestyle in mind, and she needs a pet that can fit that. No point adopting a shelter cat if, uh, if you already know that, like, it's not gonna, you know, fit well with what you're doing with your life. Ah, boy, what, a, what an interesting tangent we've gone on. Hey, Passport Wise, are you done with that hull yet? Are you doing stuff? You're saving the you're saving the vehicle. Well, very well done. Good boy. Oh boy. So yeah, it's like again, like also a fun fact with hulls like this. I um, it actually saves block count a little bit to slope the bits that uh, contain space that you're not going to use anyway. And also, slopes look good. That, that's the extent, usually, of my aesthetic uh, ability, is that slopes uh, look good, and so I use lots of them. Man, just thinking about that round ship again. Round ships are actually in From the Depths. It's just the main thing I was surprised by is how fast it was, because it's nothing but slopes. And the thing turns incredibly quickly. Um, because it's got very little drag going sideways. They make damn good frontsiders, actually. But yeah, now I want to just build a freaking round ship with a giant pancake turret. Oh no, I made myself hungry again. I've got pancake mix. I should make pancakes. Or, I should, uh, 
subtly hint to my flatmate uh, that we can both have pancakes. And then she can make them because she's really good at it and I'm not. Oh dear. I'm terrible. I love to eat, but uh, I don't know. I'm decent. I'm decent at cooking. It's just I'm lazy because I usually make food just for myself. We have an arrangement in the flat uh, because we have wild diff wildly differing tastes in food. Is that uh, we've got our own food and we eat our own food unless the offer is to share. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, New Zealand is once again in lockdown thanks to the you know what. And so we're all sitting at home, uh, getting very bored. Hashtag New, Ze New Zealand hellhole. <laughs> I love that. If you've ever searched that hashtag, hashtag, hashtag on Twitter, oh, it's hilarious. It's saying like, oh, no, life is so terrible. I get up uh, and I just look out the window and I see this and it's like a, a stunningly beautiful view of Queenstown or something. And it's like... Oh no, oh no, it's terrible. I had some, like, you know, I had hummingbird coffee or something that's just like, you know, oh, New Zealand, hashtag New Zealand hellhole, which I think uh, might annoy uh, a lot of people um, in places where they're not doing so hot on the whole you know what thing. Not sure why I'm, uh, I'm not saying the name of the thing. It's just, I think, I don't know, the algorithm isn't as, uh, as rough on people uh, saying the name of the thing. The virus. Uh, but, um... Yeah, I don't like reminding people that it's a thing, because we know it's a thing. We know it is an omnipresent thing in the, li in the lives of everybody right now. And who wants to be reminded of that in your recreation? Which hopefully this is. What else would this be, come to think of it? If you were hoping to learn something, well, good luck to you. Because I sure as hell, when I was building this, wasn't thinking that anyone would be looking at it thinking, Hey, here's how to do things. Because like I said, this this whole design, uh, not optimal. Not optimizable. Optimizable? What word is that? Borderwise, get your head in the game and in the dictionary and look up new words. Better words than the ones... You're currently just making it up. Hey, hey, hey. So yeah, hull design is good for some things, uh, not for others. Uh, that turret is just a giant, um, wonderful uh, <laughs> lapse of judgment, uh, because uh, probably a lot better and more space efficient to have like eight. Well, how many is that? Like four different. Uh, yeah, four different turrets um, using guns like that, because that way the whole hull can be narrower and just generally smaller and it's just it'll be a lot better and also it would actually look like a ship uh, not like a canoe uh, excuse me that got inflated oh boy oh boy this is the part where uh, the video starts lagging a bit because there's a lot of blocks happening um we'll be able to see when the v menu pops up again but uh, uh this uh, this is a big canoe this is a uh, a, uh, a big thick canoe. A thick T-H-I-C. Once again, as the people say. So, yep, 14,000 blocks. Volume of, damn it, I just missed it. I could rewind the video and check that, but I don't want to because I'm lazy and I'm, and I'm the kind of guy who does things all at one take. Never mind if the take is actually good. <laughs> Saves a lot of stress. Oh, boy. So yeah, we're basically almost done um, with the front half of this thing. And I forget what exactly I managed to accomplish in this recording session. Eh, still got a little bit to go, so it's more than just the hull, I can say that much. Um, I think, yeah, we do test fire this thing. We do test fire this thing. Note to self, note to future self, put muzzle flash in the video. People click on things with explosions in them, and if you don't, Good on you, but also why? <laughs> oh boy. I really do like uh, the uh, new-ish uh, muzzle brakes. Uh, also the fact that they look cool and they don't actually negatively affect the speed of the shell anymore. That's cool, I like that. I like that. And this ship actually needs them because uh, those shells have a lot of recoil. Man, I'm gonna make a battleship now. 
I mean, I'm what? Technically, this is a battleship because it does battle. Like, a, like a more ship of the line uh, in technicality there ever was. So now we've got effectively half a canoe. And I believe I do the thing I always do, which I... Well, right now I'm just admiring my work. I love this hull. It's not a super efficient hull, but I like it. The end result of this thing isn't actually particularly fast either, because there's only so many... It could make it a lot faster. But I find with things this big, um, they tend not to dodge a lot of uh, shots anyway. Uh, because, well, they're too big. Uh, you miss this thing, you really need to get your eyes tested. More precisely, the eyes of your gunners uh, tested. Oh boy. Alrighty ho then. So now, it is sexy prefab time. Everyone's favorite time. I say that, I have no idea if that's everyone's favorite time, but it's one of my favorite times. And... Can you imagine playing from the depths and never using prefabs? That would be... That would be a nightmare. It would take so long. It would take such a long time to do anything. And I do recall at this point, I somehow managed to stuff this up. Um, with taking the prefab. And uh, I don't remember how I stuff up. I definitely do. I will remember it very soon. Why are you saving now? Oh, I was saving, presumably, to avoid, um, stuffing up. Right, there we go. Is that stuffed up? No, it's not, and... Yep! A uh, serious lag. Because there's a lot of things happening at once, and all of those things are blocks. And hallelujah, there she goes. She got booty! She didn't have booty before, but now she got... Oh, there's the stuff up. Um, I fixed that later, but uh, there's a triangle slope uh, that was left off. But yeah, there she is, big octogun party canoe. Uh, that's, uh, she's got a hull now. Pretty good looking hull. If I do so, so myself. I used to not like the kind of a staggered wood pattern uh, that you would get, but now I quite like it. It uh, adds, um, it adds character. Can't describe it better than that. So now, uh, the fun stuff is going to happen in that, I believe, uh, we're going to add an AI compartment. A heavy armor AI compartment, because that's a good idea. And I am so happy that I finally, uh, some time ago, prefabbed um, some, uh, what do we call it, some uh, AI boxes. Because one of the key things to um, uh, being able to hammer out designs faster from the depths is in your it's just um, apropos of nothing make uh, whenever you do something a particular thing over and over and over again um, just prefab it just make a note of um, things that you do repeatedly like every time you build something and prefab it like right here for instance uh, the control seat that I have right there I prefab that because that's the same configuration I use every time and I seem to recall uh, in the last um, episode of building this darn thing, I said that I was going to do something different with the turret, uh, detection-wise, and also what's in the cheeks of it. And I never did that. I just kind of stuck two detection turrets on top of it, and I called it a day. So... Whoopsie daisy. Right, so this is the part where... What are you doing, Borderwise? What are you doing? What are you doing? Ah, I think... Oh, right, 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 right. I know, I know what Past Borderwise is doing. Past Borderwise is doing stuff. He is expanding the AI compartment because we don't have enough GPP, P, 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 P. I know how to start saying general purpose processing power, but I don't know how to stop. Okay, so, um, this kind of tower thing, I'm not sure about it. I am not sure about uh, it at all. It's probably not the best idea, you want that hugging. It's interesting that uh, once you make your designs taller, you have to kind of flip things around in order to jam things in, uh, in a way that they fit. In this particular case, whew. 
Man, it's weird looking at this because of the finished result of this, the AI compartment is actually surrounded by other stuff. It's, uh... Yeah, it's interesting. Also, I'm having a weird memory glitch right now because I remember... Later on in the build, I was kind of commenting to myself in my head, not even out loud. Just imagining what I would say afterwards. And I just got that weird memory thing is like, I had a memory of something that didn't happen. Like, I had a memory of um, me commenting on the engine design of this thing, and I've never done that. I have not recorded that yet. So yeah, we're like, alright, so for those of you who are worried, here we are, we're about to fix the one prefab glitch. And that's why it's actually, oh, very handy thing to do uh, when building anything, is actually, sometimes you got to stop and take a look at it. Oh, here's the part where I remember that my canoes have tails now. Why? Because I say so. Sorry, I just ate a yawn. And it was delicious. Alright. What are you doing, passport wise? How are you going to make this tail work? Uh, you're going to make this tail work through, when in doubt, stagger slopes. When in doubt, you slope stagger slopes. Them's the rules that I just made up. I'm just watching uh, past me do this and thinking, what are you planning? What is your game plan? What is your purpose? Why did you turn off block connections if you're going to follow them anyway? Oh boy. I really gotta make more stuff with like scary figureheads on the front. Maybe instead of canoe guy, I can be longboat guy. Because it's basically the same thing. Fun fact, ooh, here's another history thing. There is a convergent design uh, between Maori war canoes, uh, like New Zealand Maori war canoes, waka as they're known. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And, um, and Viking longboats, because they had a similar purpose in mind. The idea was, is that um, you have this long, sleek thing with a low profile. Um, could be... Uh, uh, Waka didn't actually have uh, sails on them, they were just rowed. Um, but that's in common with the uh, Viking longboats, which uh, could be sailed... Uh, well, they were always sailed. Um, which uh, could use sails or oars. And the purpose of them is very similar. They... Um, very sleek, so very fast, uh, when you've got a whole bunch of dudes rowing at full steam. Um, low profile, so... Uh, hard to see over the horizon. Uh, they were shallow draft, so that you could sail them into shallow water, no problemo, which means that uh, raiding coastal settlements uh, was a lot easier. And um, I believe both uh, Vikings and Maori warriors sometimes uh, either dismantled uh, their their ships or boats and uh, carried them over land. Which is awesome. It's interesting how um, two cultures that never... It's a little bit like convergent evolution. Like how um, different animals that live worlds apart end up looking similar because they're under similar selective pressure. How human beings uh, with culture and technology, uh, they come across similar solutions for things. Which is why uh, pretty much every single human culture that has ever existed uh, has... Well, has invented spears, or some variation of it. It's the pointy stick. So, in case, here's, well, history lesson number three of the day. Most influential uh, weapon in human history, the pointy stick, aka the spear, aka the polearm, which has been used right throughout the entirety of human history and prehistory, and um, is technically still used today. Just with everything that requires pointy stickness. Um, right up until the bayonets that still sometimes gets affixed uh, on the end of modern assault rifles. So, there you go. Uh, truly, the pointy stick is a thing for the ages. Um, there was a thing. Oh yeah, so uh, the pointy stick, aka the spear, is 
might actually be the oldest weapon uh, ever. So, um, like, there is evidence to suggest that uh, the spear uh, predates things like hand axes and, um, you know, clubs and stuff like that. And, um, and people were using it to kill things uh, before anything else, which is very impressive. And quite humbling, actually. The pointy stick reigns supreme. And... Yeah, this is where we designed the ammo compartment, isn't it? And, um... Yeah, so, uh... To the point where the spear, as a weapon and as a technology, might actually predate our species, Homo sapiens. Because... Uh, we were not the first species of human to invent hunting or weapons. Uh, that was other species. And I'm gonna leave it there, because it's so exciting that I can't uh, stop my excitement. You can tell by the sound of my voice. And also, we've got to talk about this ammo compartment. So, I have a habit of always forgetting uh, to include a separate compartment for uh, the APS uh, controllers. The shell... What are they called again? I use them all the time and I've forgotten what they're called. But yeah, the ammo customizers. So, I always forget about that, but this time I remembered. And right now we're doing uh, the um, slightly more chain reaction proof um, thing uh, that I do in ammo compartments that very kind people told me about. See, I read, I read comments and I listen to them. So if you see me doing something wrong and um, you don't say anything and then you complain about it at a later date, you... well, I am to blame, but you are also to blame because you had the power to make positive change in the world, and you didn't do it, so you win the grand prize for being not very helpful, <laughs> so... Uh, take that, um, people I've never met and never heard of. So, yeah, what is happening here? So, this is, uh, again, it, this is like the air compartment. It's a kind of a tower uh, compartment, which I don't feel it's a very good idea. Usually, um, this is going to throw the center of mass way off and put it too high, and it's just not a good idea. But in this particular case, it's absolutely fan dozy because this whole ship is made out of stuff that floats, and it has more floaty material near the top of it due to the way... Uh, the hull slopes up at both ends, so um, this kind of tower design, this might actually be one of the few kinds of hull that you can get away with it. If you tried this in a more, I guess, standard hull, uh, you might have problems with that. So, now you gotta check the ammo. Need more ammo. Need way more ammo. And the only reason I really was rushing to get this ammo compartment finished uh, in this video is uh, because I really wanted to test fire the guns on something because that's oh that feels so good it feels so good just to make a thing and finally fire the guns and this is the point where I realized that uh, the uh, material requirement of the weapons just keeps ticking up the more ammo boxes I place I'm like oh no oh no that's not good <laughs> but then I prefab the whole thing it's all okay <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I could make this ammo compartment even bigger. I could- there's a lot of spare room in this. I should just add a whole bunch of huge missiles to this thing. I should go ham. I should go ham, I should go bacon, I should go full tortilla. I'm not sure why I said tortilla in the weaponry for this thing, because it needs it and deserves it. So yeah. Man, mega canoes are fun. If you haven't tried building a mega canoe, I can highly recommend it. And you can recommend to me a fun thing to build. And you'll probably be right, and I'll probably forget to do it and make another canoe instead. Because I'm terrible like that. But, uh, yeah, so, ammo compartment, hmm. That kind of check, uh, checker pattern in the ammo compartment is, uh... This is actually a very safe ammo compartment. In combat testing this thing, the ammo really doesn't cook off that easily, partially because uh, there's a lot of space between it and the outside world, because it's a big port. But uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's pretty secure as ammo compartments go. Man, I love learning things in From the Depths. And now we have enough materials for the ammo, and it's fantastic. 
And I sincerely hope that I remember... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Alright, so, I think... I think, I think, with my brain brain, uh, that um, this has kind of cocked up the... Uh, yeah, what shells are loaded, because this is the test firing. Bang. Bang. Alright, so that's me pausing, seeing what's loaded, and whoopsie-daisy, it's just two kinds of shell. This is always the risk. And is why actually it's a better idea to put the ammo customizers down first before the turret. Uh, otherwise that happens, it gets confused about what shells it's actually supposed to be in. Or it got completely cocked up by the fact that uh, it had mirror mode. So now, this is me trying to fix that in step one, is just replace the turret. And uh, that was me saving the game in case uh, me removing the turret causes the game to crash. Uh, that has happened before in the misty mists of time oh boy computer goes chug and up there just checking that it's in there man i love necklace turrets they make life easier for me for me personally so now just checking the things again because what? Why are you checking the barrels? There was no need to do that. You knew what you had to see. Okay, firstly, turret rotation is good. Turret rotation is good. And mess that up because it hit the water. And waiting, 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 waiting. And see what happened. And... Uh, nope, it's still only two kinds of shell. And there's eight kinds of shell in this gun. So that is a fantastic way to end a video. It's just being like, ah, bugger it. Bugger it, I'll fix that off camera. And I did fix it off camera. So, yep, we're gonna shoot a marauder now. We are going to shoot a marauder <laughs> in the head, repeatedly. With, um, lots of guns. It is great fun to watch this thing fire because it's just ridiculous amounts of Daka. Also, yep, AI dead immediately. Well, what did you expect? <laughs> now spawn in three marauders because, like, uh, just like, you know, Marauder's gotta die, man. Marauder's gotta die. Oh boy. And this is where the game lags because the Marauder died too hard. Whee! Whee! And I just realized that there's a downside to um, uh, making uh, pre recording footage like this. It's like now. I need to figure out a thumbnail and I can't pose this thing afterwards because it's already finished. Whoopsie daisy. Well, I think this will do though. Bang. Yay. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, they're all dead. Oops. It's almost like this gigantic turret dishes out a lot of damage. Who would have thought? <laughs> okay, well done me. You took a screenshot. You remembered things. Okay, that's um... Yeah, that's basically it uh, for, for well, we made the hull, and more than the hull, we put some AI on it, we put some ammo on it, we accomplished stuff, and we're well on the way um, to showing the whole making of, of this thing. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's build. Farewell.